Uh, today I want to share with you, the title of today's sermon is called Christian Lifestyle. Christian Lifestyle. And I want to share with you from the book of Philippians. The letter that Paul wrote, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 18. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 18. Uh, let's read this together. It's not, it's not that long. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 through 18. Ready? Let's begin. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Do everything without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like the bright stars in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then, on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work has not useless was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy. You know, over the years, I've, had, I've heard many silly things. Uh, you might even say, if I heard some pretty stupid things, I've been asked many silly questions. And one of the silly questions that I've heard in my life, and believe me, I am telling the truth, is that some people came, would come to me and say, you know, hey, how can you just live with one woman? There's so many women in this world. How can you be married just to one woman? Believe it or not, I've been asked that question more than once. And I've been asked this, and I've been, you know, asked this question many times. This question is, it's like, you don't drink? You mean you don't go to bars? You mean you've never ever gone to a bar? How can you live your life not drinking? How can you live your life without having to gone, gone to bars? You've never done that? Let me just say, I don't want to make everyone here who's taking a wine here and there feel guilty. I'm not talking about you. But these people are saying, you mean you don't go to bars to hang out for, you know, three, four, five, six hours? You don't go to bars and you don't get wasted? I mean, how can you live your lives that way? And believe me when I say that I've been asked that question more than half a dozen times. In fact, even in my previous recent vacation, someone asked me, you don't drink? Oh my goodness, you don't drink? As if, and I'm doing something really, really, I'm missing out on something really, really good. And then people would say, oh, okay. Okay, I know. You're, you're, you're a good man. And when people say that, oh, you are a good man, they're saying it, oh, you must be a good man, a holy man. A man who is like a saint because you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't go to bars, and you don't sleep around, chase after different women. And so they say, oh, you're a good man. But, but when they say it, they don't say it like, wow, you're such a good man. But really, this is the way they say it. Oh, oh you're, you're a good man. As if they feel sorry for me as if I am missing out on something that is good. When people ask me this type of question, there are two things that comes, comes to my mind. Number one, first of all, I'm not really a good man. You know, you just don't know me well enough. You know, I do a lot of bad things. If you don't believe me, ask my wife. She'll tell you. She can spend an entire, you know, a few hours telling you all the bad things that I've done. But the second thing that comes to my mind is that why in the world would I want to live your life? See, when they make a comment like, oh, you don't go to bars, you don't drink, as if, you know, man, you're missing out. But in my mind, I'm saying to myself, why in the world would I ever 
go back to living your lifestyle. Why would I ever want to live, leave my life and live your life? Of course, I don't say that to them because I don't want to insult them. But in my heart, that's what I'm thinking. But I realize the reason why many people think this way, and believe me, many people do think this way, because I've heard it so many times, that they think that as a Christian, the Christian life that we live, they feel sorry for us because they feel like, you know, we have given up so much. They feel sorry for us because they feel like we have chosen a life, you know, of giving up all that is fun, all that is good, all that is exciting, just to obey God. And when I hear that kind of things, and when I feel that type of, you know, feeling or impression, you know, I realize that, there's so many people in this world, they really do not understand what Christian life is all about. They really don't understand what Christian lifestyle is all about. Again, most people in this world think that Christian life, Christian lifestyle is mainly about do's and don'ts. Again, I've been a pastor now for 17 years. And some, you know, sometimes when I talk to people about Christianity, immediately they think like, oh, if you go to church, you can't drink. Let me say this to you right now. I have never, well, that's a very strong word, but I cannot remember ever telling anyone, because you're a Christian, you cannot drink. I've never said it in that manner. I have never said it. I don't remember. Okay, let me say it, rephrase it. I, have, I don't remember ever telling anyone, because you're a Christian, you should not smoke. Now, there are many other reasons why we should not smoke. But I've never told anyone, because you're a Christian, you should not smoke. But too many people, we think that Christianity is about a bunch of do's and don'ts. They think, you know, if you're a Christian, you know, some people, some people have actually told me, you know, I don't want to be a Christian. I'm not ready yet. Why not? And they say, well, because I don't want to give up drinking. See, in their minds, they think Christianity is about a bunch of do's and do nots. That if you want to be a Christian, you have to do these things, and you cannot do these things. See, nothing can be further from the truth. And they think that Christianity is also about giving up all our earthly joy and pleasure. They think Christianity means that we need to sacrifice and give up all that is good, all that is fun. And if that were true, if that were the case, then I stand here today and I, will, I am confessing to you that I am the worst Christian in the world because I am enjoying life, I have so much fun, that means I'm not being a good Christian according to what the world thinks. Let me say this to you. Most of the decisions that I've made in my life as an, as an adult all the things that I do right now, all the things that I do, I, I do right now as an adult, not a single decision, not a single choice was forced upon me. No one told me that as a pastor you cannot drink, you shouldn't drink. I don't drink, by the way, but that's not why I don't drink. Not a single person has ever told me, because you're a pastor, you should not smoke. I don't smoke, but that's not the reason why I don't smoke. All the things that I do, spending time with my family, serving you, serving this church, I choose not to use profanity. I don't use the F word. But no one told me that because you're a pastor, you should not use that type of language. It was never forced upon me. In fact, some of the things that people have forced upon me or try to, saying that because you're a pastor, you should do this and this and this, much of those things, you know what? I ended up not succeeding. Why? Because my heart wasn't in it. When I do things simply because others have pressured me, it doesn't last as long. Why? Because I did not choose to do it. There's no ownership on my part. But the things that I do right now, that I continue to do, I do well. And I do them faithfully. Why? Because I have chosen to do it on my own because of my belief and my conviction. 
because of my Christian lifestyle, which I'm going to talk to you more about. Again, Christian life, Christianity is not about do's and, and do nots. In letter to the church in Philippi, in Philippians chapter 2, the verse that we just read, Paul, the apostle, the follower, of disciple of Christ, he talks to us about what really is a Christian life. And because of this Christian life, this really determines why we do what we do. Not because someone forced us to do it. First thing that Paul mentions here is that Christian life is not about do's and do nots. But Christian life, it says in Philippians chapter 2, is a life of truth and integrity. See, that's what Christianity is all about. It's about truth and integrity. In verse 12, it says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Paul says here, Paul, the disciple of Christ, said, you know what? When I was with you, you were very faithful. You were faithful to God. You did all the things that I instructed you to do. But Paul says, as a Christian, it is even more important that you do the right things, even though I am not there with you. In this word, what Paul is saying is this. We need to live our lives doing what is right. Not only when we are being watched, but when we are, when no one is watching us. This is what Paul is basically saying. I don't want you to live a good life. I don't want you to do certain things simply because I was there with you. Now that I am not with you, it is even more important that you continue to live that good life. What is, what is, the, what is Paul saying? Paul is saying is that Christian lifestyle is about integrity and is about truth. A few months ago, a friend of mine, shared uh, what was going on in his company. He's a good man, and in his company, he had several workers. And his, this worker that he hired, actually, he was very capable. He was not a young man. He was a man in his 40s. Uh, he, was, uh, he was bilingual. He spoke English well. He spoke Korean well. Very, very capable. In fact, he was one of the better workers that he thought that he had. But one day, but he told me eventually he had to let him go. He had to fire him. And the reason being was that even though this man worked hard, apparently it, he seemed to have, he worked hard, but what he discovered was that when he, the owner, my friend, was out of the office, when he was away on business trips, this man's behavior and attitude was, it changed. It, it became totally the opposite. When the boss was around, he was very faithful. He worked hard and he was very obedient. But when the boss was away, he found out that oftentimes that he would leave, his, leave the office early. And on certain occasions, he would even not, not even show up for work. And when my friend found out about this, he said he had no choice but to let him go. You see, Bible tells us Christian lifestyle is not about do's and don'ts. It's really about living the life of truth and integrity. Life of integrity means that we do, we do same thing whether someone is watching us or whether someone is not watching us. Life of integrity means that we work just as hard when our boss is not around, not just when he is around. You see, you can tell a lot about a person, really, you can tell a lot. You can judge someone really well by watching them and see how they behave when they're not being watched versus when they are being watched. In other words, you can tell more about a person by seeing how hard they work at home versus how hard they work at office. You know, in Korea, especially in my opinion in Korea, many people work really, really hard at work, really 10, 12, 13, 14 hours a day. And that is good. That is not a bad thing. And I think that's why Korea is like the 12th you know, largest economy. And it's, you know, it is, it is one of the most you know, uh, modern and sophisticated you know, society in the world because people work so hard. But you know, to me, it's not that difficult to work hard at work because you're being watched 
by your boss. You have coworkers there. You have managers all the time. And you have people that are constantly measuring your result, how well you're doing. And because of it, it's not too difficult to me to work hard. But what is to me really a measure of who you are is how well you work at home when really no one is judging you. I, mean, I know that your wife is judging you, but you don't have all these peers. You, have, you don't have the pressure. The boss is judging you. To me, you can tell more about a, a person by how this he or she manages his or her family. It means that you can tell more about a person by how they treat their family versus how they treat their coworkers or bosses. I don't get impressed by people that always, you know, you know, kiss up, always nice to the boss. I'm not. But what I am impressed by are people, husbands who are loving and gentle to their wives, and wives who are gentle and loving and caring to their husbands. See, those are the things that impresses me more. Because those are the things that are done in secret when no one else is watching, but it's only done among themselves. See, those are the things that really truly measure who you are. And Bible tells us that that's what Christian lifestyle is all about. Living in truth and in integrity. That means that you do, you live your lives in a right way, whether people are watching you or whether no one is watching you. It means that you can tell more about a person, more about a person by how they treat their parents versus how they treat their friends. I've said this all the time to students. You know what? You know, it's easy to, you know, be nice to your friends and because you're, you know, you need them. They're your friends and they're popular. But it's how you treat your parents. It's how you respect your mother and father that really tells me who you are. Because those are done in the secret in your home when no one is watching. Again, that is what Christian lifestyle is all about. It's not about do this and don't do that. It's about being saying, I am honest. I'm being truthful. Now, we may not always do the right things, but living in truth is also life of Christianity, a Christian living. A Christian can, should be able to say, what you see is what you get. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to be at home, you know, I'm going to curse and swear and drink and gamble, do all these things. And I'm not going to come to church on Sunday and say, oh, hallelujah, praise God, amen. You know. But rather, what you see is what you get. See, that's what Christian living is all about. It doesn't mean that we should come up here and boast like, oh yeah, this week, uh, yeah, I went partying. Because I just want to be honest, because I'm a Christian. Yeah, I, went, I, went, I got drunk. That's not what I'm talking about. It means being truthful and honest with God. See, people say, you know, I don't want to go to church because church is filled with hypocrites. I saw so-and-so person at a bar one day. Man, I saw this person on the sidewalk. I heard him curse and swear. When people tell me that, I'm like, so what's your point? Just because we're Christian does not mean we're perfect. Being a Christian means that we're strong enough to admit our weaknesses and seek God's forgiveness when we fall and stumble. You see, people oftentimes say, you know, wow, how did you change? How did you, you know, you know I, I said this this past week, and I said, I mentioned this during the retreat and also to, uh, during the week to some of my students that, you know, I wasn't always a good man that you think that I am. That when I, in my younger days, you know, I always do this. I was a bad boy, you know. People think, you know, I told them, you know, when I was in college, I used to go to discotheques, clubs, every weekend. Friday, Saturday, and even on Sundays, and I would come home at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. In my younger days, believe it or not, my favorite hobby was not basketball. That was my number two hobby. My favorite hobby was chasing after girls. But I have to admit that I was better at basketball than chasing after girls. I wasn't too good at that hobby. 
But when I became a Christian, it's not that all of a sudden that God came into my heart, boom! I was, I was no longer attracted to girls. Hmm? No, nothing, nothing, oh, no, no, you know. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't like when I became a Christian, boom, all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I'm not going to, I don't want to curse and swear. Oh, I don't, I don't need to go to parties with friends. I, I, I don't need to go have fun with them. I can break off all my friendship with them. I can just live on my own. I can just live a boring life, go home all day at home. It wasn't like that. It wasn't easy. When I became a Christian, when God entered my life, what God did was He gave me courage to admit and to confess my weakness and my faults. When God came into my life, what happened was I now had the courage to confess to God and to some of my church leaders and say, I have a problem. I, I, I chase after girls too much. I go to parties too much. I like it. And because of that courage to admit my weaknesses and faults, it allowed me to seek God's help in making my life better. You see, I don't drink. I never liked the taste of alcohol. So that might have helped me. But let me just say this. I used to drink. When I was in college, I told you, I go to parties. And let me tell you, when you go to parties in college in America, they don't serve Coke and Sprite and water. They always serve alcohol, beer with mixed drinks, rum and Coke, and all those things. And even though I didn't like the taste of alcohol, because that's all they had, and because I was thirsty, I drank. And I honestly believe that if I was not a Christian, I would continue to live, continue to have lived that lifestyle, and eventually, I would have probably gotten used to the taste of alcohol and probably, like many people in this world, live a lifestyle where I drink and go to bars. But I don't do that anymore. Not because I am holy. Not because God said, don't do this, don't do that. But because God, when God entered my life, I realized there's some of the things that I did was not a good thing. And I say, God, I don't want to do that. Going to parties and getting drunk and wasted, I said, that is not a good thing. I said, God, help me. And going to parties all the time and looking at girls and trying to get their phone number and trying to call them up and sweet talk them, all of those things. And I realized that that was not a good thing. I was disrespecting women. And it was wrong. And God gave me the courage to admit that I was wrong. And because I had the courage to admit my weaknesses and faults, guess what? That was the beginning of my healing. That was the beginning of a changed life. See, I am who I am today, not because someone said, because you're a Christian, you can't do that, you should do that, don't do that. It was never like that. But it was me realizing, I don't want to do that. See, living a life of honesty, and truth and integrity. It sets us free. John chapter 8 verse 32 says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, I am who I am today because I, was, I had the strength to be truthful about who I was. And those people who do not have the truth, and who do not have the courage to be truthful, they only have but one option, and that is to continue to lie, to cover up the lie. And then to lie again, to cover up that lie, that covers up the other lie. And the only way for us to live, to be free of a lie, is to live in the truth. See, I am who I am today because the truth of God set me free. See, that is what Christian life Christian lifestyle is all about. The second part, and there's only two, Christian life is about living the life of truth and integrity. And Paul also mentioned in this passage that Christian living is also about loving life. Are you hearing me? Christian lifestyle is about loving life. 
Verse 14 says, Do everything without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in the world full of crooked and perverse people. You know, here it says, Do everything without complaining and arguing. And again, oftentimes when we read the Bible, too often we just kind of glance, you know, over the surface without really going deep into what it's trying to say. When Paul, the disciple of Christ, instructed, you know, do everything without complaining and arguing, what is he really saying? I'll tell you what he's saying. He's saying, I want you to live your life to the fullest. I want you to enjoy life. I want you to have fun. Let me say this. Show me a person that complains, and you think about someone like that in your life as well. Show me someone that complains a lot. Show me someone that argues a lot. And I will show you a person who is sad and miserable. And when you think about some people that you know that are like that, you, are, you will be in 100% agreement with me. Because to love life, to enjoy life, is to not to complain, and it's not to argue. You know, for the past three years that I lived in Korea, you know, I am Korean. I'm also American. I love Korea, but I also love America. And it saddens me to hear some foreigners, and, and, there, I, and I encounter many foreigners. <coughs> and over the past three years, I've met many foreigners who lived in Korea, not for one, but maybe two or three years. And, and it bothers me that many of them complain about Korea and Korean culture. Some of the complaints that people have is like, man, these Korean people, you walk around the street and they look at you, they stare at you, they point at you, you know? And you know, even some ajumas, they even come when you're riding on the bus, they come and they touch you like you're some sort of strange meat, and, you know, they want to check you out, and they're like, what's wrong with these people? Some people say, man, look at these Korean people, they don't, they don't, know. <coughs> they don't care about their... Some of them say, these Korean parents, you know, they don't know about their children. <coughs> they don't care about their... They say that they care about their education, but all they do is just spend money. And they don't care. They don't care how I teach. Even They don't care the fact that <coughs> you know, I play with them, I don't do anything with them, and they just complain and complain and complain. <coughs> and to a certain degree, I agree with them. I agree with them that Korean people are like that that Korean people tend to stare, especially Korean ajumas. You know, for me, at least I try to be discreet. If I see something that's kind of unusual, at least I just kind of like, honey, kind of look, at, look at that, you know? <laughs> Korean ajumas, oh man, oh man, <laughs> you know? And it's true. But that's the reality. But there's different ways of looking at it. One of the persons that I really respected highly and that I really liked Many of you remember him. Do you remember Pastor Jeff Johnson from Tennessee? He worked with us for about three months, four months, with our church uh, last year <coughs> for about four months. And one of the things that he mentioned that I was really imp impressed and I was blessed was, he says, he says, I love Korea. And in fact, he's going to come visit us later on, uh, next month. He says, I love Korea. He says, and I said, why do you love Korea? He says, oh, it's just so much fun. I said, what do you mean? He says, you know, in America, I walk around the street, I go anywhere, and nobody notices me. Sometimes it can be very lonely because you can go anywhere and no one talks to you, no one notices you, and sometimes, you know, he's a single man, and, you know, it's not as fun. But here in Korea, it doesn't matter. I just walk out the street and everyone just kind of approaches you. I don't have to do anything. I just stand there and people come and talk to you. Little children come and talk to you and say, hello, how are you? You know, I'm fine, thank you. And you, you know, that type of thing. He says, I love Korea, you know, even the ajumas, you know, they come and they poke at you and I love it. And I, and I turn around and I ask him, so how are you? And like, oh, 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 you know, and, and he says he loves it, he loves it. And the Korean culture, but he says, you know, Korean parents doing that, it is true. Korean parents, you know, they do spend a lot of money, but it also reflects their passion and their love. And he says, you know, it's such a great opportunity for me 
to really, you know, you know, teach the children and also use my English to really reach out to them and talk to them about God. You see, in life, it, we have a choice. Either we can look at things and whine and complain, or we can see things in a different way. You see, this is what Christian lifestyle is all about. What Paul is saying is this. Christian lifestyle is about loving life. He's saying, don't waste your life complaining and whining about different things. Enjoy and love life. You know, one of the things that I remember, this was vividly about a few years ago, was that a friend of mine got married. It was a female friend. And I was invited to their wedding and I attended. And the husband, he was not a Christian. You know, he and I were talking. Even though he was not a Christian, he respected me because his wife was a Christian. He respected me because I was a pastor. And we were talking and so forth, and he was mentioning that he knows what his friends are about to do. And that is, on, on the wedding night, after the wedding ceremony, he said, his friends, I know what they do. They've done this every, you know, every year with their other friends who got married. They said, you know, or on wedding night, they're going to come to our motel room, hotel room, and they're going to bring you know, you know, kegs of beer and alcohol, and they're going to get me drunk. I know that. He said, and I, I looked at him. His name was Young. I said, Young, do you love your wife? He says, yes. You know, you only get married once. Do you really want to be drunk on your wedding night, the first night of your marriage? And he thought for a minute. He said, and I told him, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I want you to think about that. Well, I find out later saying that exact thing happened. The bunch of friends came up and tried to get him drunk, and I found out that his wife told me that he yelled at his friends, Hey, are you trying to get me drunk on my wedding night? I'm not going to get drunk on my wedding night. You see, I choose not to drink. Not because someone told me, as a pastor, you shouldn't drink. No one has told me that. I think they assume it, but no one has told me that. I don't drink because the Bible says, do not drink. In fact, let me be very clear here. The Bible says, do not be drunk. It doesn't say, do not drink. Now, that's a whole other subject. Don't, say, don't think that I'm condoning drinking alcohol. I'm not. But the thing is, I choose not to drink because I want to enjoy life. You see, I see a lot of people that, you know, on weekends, the first thing they do on weekends is they go to bars. And I'm not talking about single men. I'm talking about married men in their late 30s and 40s. Every week, throughout the week, the only thing they look forward to is, you know what, I want to go and I want to go drink and I want to go to a club. I want to get wasted. Believe me, I've heard that many times. And they will say, you know, and, you know, they don't invite me because they know that I'm a Christian. Somehow they think, because I'm a Christian, I don't drink. But I choose not to do that because I, I love life. See, I don't want, I don't need alcohol to create that false sense of, you know, you know euphoria. Because I love life. See, I don't want to waste my life, wasted four, five, six hours. But I want to be home, enjoying my son and enjoying my daughter. Because I love life. I don't want to be away, you know, for five, six hours, you know, drunk drinking at a bar, but I want to be home, enjoying life with my wife, going, on, going grocery shopping with my family, watching my children grow up. I want to grow. I want to live my life loving life. That's why I choose not to drink. Not because someone told me, you should not, don't do this, don't do that. I am who I am because I want to love life. I want to enjoy life. I don't curse and I don't swear. You know why? Because I want to try not hard not to complain and whine. I don't want to look at everything in life and go, man, F this and that, you know, D that. I don't want to do that. But instead, I want to look at everything and say, you know what, that's not bad, that's funny, that's good. You know, I don't smoke because, not because someone told me not, I shouldn't drink, I, don't, I shouldn't smoke. I don't smoke because, you know what, I want to live long and healthy life where I can enjoy it. Not because someone said, you shouldn't do that, you, sh you know, don't do this and don't do that. You see, so many people have a wrong idea of what Christian lifestyle is all about. I am what I am because I try to live my life in truth and in integrity. 
And I am who I am because I want to live life. I want to love life. That's why I am who I am. So going back to the question, how do I live my life? Not, you know, with just one wife. How do I live my life not drinking? How do I live my life not going to bars and clubs? How do I live like that? My response today is, why would I ever want to go back to that kind of lifestyle when now I am free. I am free to live life and love life because of Jesus Christ living in me. That is a Christian lifestyle. Let us pray.